In Taiji, Japan, it's time to hunt dolphins. After the small fishing village gained international notoriety thanks to an Oscar-winning documentary, Taiji dug in against the onslaught of criticism. On this September day, a few people have risen before dawn to show their support. The fleet gets to work. Pods of dolphins are corralled towards the infamous cove, the boats creating an underwater wall of sound to herd the animals. Shielded from view, it's no longer possible to witness what happens in the shallows where the dolphins are slaughtered. But it's not the killing for meat that's sustaining this trade. These days, the dolphin hunters of Taiji are getting more money selling the animals to China. It's one of the last countries in the world that will accept captured dolphins from Taiji. Many of the dolphins caught here face a lifetime of captivity at one of the 85 aquariums throughout China, performing tricks like the ones here at Taiji's Whale Museum. Activists argue that what happens here in the waters of this small corner of Japan reverberates around the world. This is still a global problem because these guys don't go out for six months every year because of the five Rizzo dolphins that they slaughtered for food yesterday. They do it for the six bottlenose dolphins that they took captive today because that's where the money is. So it's a global issue. It's, it's not a Japanese issue. The fishermen say they have a long tradition of hunting for dolphins and whales and argue that outsiders shouldn't be telling them what to do. These days, it's Japanese animal rights activists, not foreigners, leading the protests against the dolphin drive. Meanwhile, counter-protests continue. And so does the dolphin hunt. <laughs>